Then I made a copy of all of that into a player guide object, and it's a nice little template I can drag around the level while leaving the actual player back at the spawn point. The resolution of Celeste is 320 by 180. I figured that would be plenty for me. I don't even know how to pixel art, but there are three issues I'm seeing. One, you can't really see much in front of you, it's too zoomed in. Two, my platform tiles are double the size of Celeste's. And three, because of the canvas and tile size, I really only have about seven possible platform heights, and that's just not enough granularity for the obstacles and abilities I have planned. So the game needs to be bigger. <laughs> the canvas size is going to be doubled, and the player sprite is going back to the original animated 32 pixel one from the first video, but the tile size will stay the same. On top of that, I swapped the tile map to one that is actually the tile size I want, got the extra visible space in the camera, reset the camera bounds, increased the player fall limit, lined the player character up with the rule of thirds, and remade a simple map. Initially, the canvas size increase scares me because that's a lot of pixels to fill, but I really like the perspective, it's so much easier to see what's ahead of you, and there's double the platform height possibilities. But now it feels a bit slow, so from here I think I'm going to increase the top speed and play around with some numbers. The faster speed does seem to fit the new canvas size, and now I want a way to be able to see and measure possible jump distances with this new speed without having to literally playtest each and every jump. There is this line 2D node which seems promising, it lets you create an array of 2D vectors and then draws lines between them, but how in the world am I going to populate this array with a predictive trajectory? Looking around online I came across kinematic equations and I did not want to do them. I mean, maybe if it was just a normal jump, but I also need double jumps and air dashes. But it gave me an idea. My code has X calculations and Y calculations in separate blocks, much like breaking down this kinematic problem, so I started there. A jump adds negative 400 Y velocity to the player, but gravity counteracts it. So a quarter of a second into a jump, what is your Y position? And I have the equation right here, but what's better the game has the answer while it's running. If I set a marker on the base of the player that outputs its global Y position each frame, and then I had a sequence of Y coordinates for the jump arc. But the lines need to be relative to the player position, not the world position, so I actually need the delta position from when the point started. Simple fix, just subtract the original and new positions, limit the FPS to 10, and boom, that's my relative jump arc. I rounded the decimal number and then jumped off a ledge to get a bigger sample size, and now by taking 20 frames I have 2 seconds worth of prediction. For X, if my new top speed is 300 pixels per second and these lines are 10 FPS, then each frame I just need to add 30 pixels. And then this worked to predict a jump at 10 FPS. Awesome! But switching to 144 FPS I fell way short. Through some frustrating testing, I was able to figure out that my jump arc is actually very different at lower frame rates. A quick example is here I needed a double jump to get to this ledge at 144 FPS, but at 10 FPS I just need a single jump. That's way off. After reading more documentation, I moved my player logic back into the physics process rather than just process. Mistakes were made. Also increased the amount of physics ticks from 60 to 120. Now it behaves the same at 10 FPS, 60 FPS, 144 FPS, with higher frame rates still looking a lot smoother visually. It would be much simpler just to lock everything to 60, but it's a fast scrolling game and I want higher refresh rate monitors to be smoother. This was after doing a bunch of Excel stuff to get the paths though, so now that was all useless and I'm not doing that again. So I expanded the marker code to give me the X and Y coordinates from the point of a jump. When I hit the jump button, it basically starts logging the change in coordinates from that spot. Then once you've fallen 300 pixels from that original location, it stops. And this is now a full list of points for the path you just traveled. A little bit of log formatting was needed to make it a straight copy and paste from the editor with my new tool script, which is a Godot script that runs in the Godot editor itself rather than in the game. And it's modifying that array of points. And boom! On the line node itself, in the editor, I had a visual trajectory without kinematic equations or Excel. <laughs> the line was kind of wavy, so I took the rounding functions out and then recorded a double jump into air dash, and yeah, it just works and it's so much faster to put together. Using this insight into the movement arcs, I could see why the air dash and double jump didn't feel great in some cases. The result was pretty quick and awesome to test out different trajectories for everything, and after tuning how the player felt, I made a finalized set of trajectory predictions. 
The white line is a base jump arc, the lavender lines are double jumps, and the green lines are modifying some of those arcs with air dashes. This gives me plenty of templates to quickly line up jumps, and then platform positions can be fine-tuned later depending on the desired difficulty of the jump. Then I made a copy of all of that into a player guide object, and it's a nice little template I can drag around the level while leaving the actual player back at the spawn point. Then as a final test with the new speeds and building a level based on the trajectory guidelines, this is where we are at. Also mapped in some controller inputs to save my poor spacebar, and that just worked instantly, so cool. Lots more to do, like finishing up the jump assists, finalizing the abilities, and starting on the artwork, but those will be for future videos. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.